Welcome to Take Charge of the Classroom, a web series designed to disrupt outdated behavior management models and help you design the classroom culture of your dreams. So first, before we get into the nuts and bolts of how to take charge of your classroom, I want to make sure that you see the big picture. Where are we going with this? Well, Take Charge is actually used to stand for an acronym. CHARGE stands for six steps that we can take in order to make sure that our students and we as teachers are put in the best place to learn. And the first step is confidence. How do we show up as educators in the classroom? What is our purpose in the classroom? What is the purpose of education? And how can we make sure that we get ourselves right first before we try to help our students? So that's that first step is confidence. Next is heart. What is the heart of teaching? Where is our heart? And it lies in relationships with students. And there are some biological and some neuroscience reasons why relationships are so important. This isn't just touchy-feely stuff. This is hard science that shows that we teach through our relationships. So we start with our self first, gaining confidence. And then we understand the true heart of teaching, which are relationships. Then we turn to the students. And procedures are a huge part of any classroom management system that is effective. You might call them routines or procedures, whatever you call it. You can anticipate problems and you can avoid probably 80 to 85% of all classroom management problems can disappear through this step, anticipate by building in routines and procedures and making sure you have them down pat. But that's not gonna get rid of all classroom management problems. So next we come to reinforce. This is where it gets really interesting and we pull from behavioral psychology to learn about the power of our attention. That's actually our superpower as teachers and how we can use differential social attention to reinforce the behaviors we wanna see more of and to ignore the behaviors that we wanna see less of. And we can actually change students' behavior patterns simply by what we focus on and reinforce. Now, just because we get them to stop doing certain behaviors doesn't mean that they're in a place that they are ready to learn. This grow phase is really important because we are intentionally building pro-social behaviors, whether it be emotional literacy and empathy, or it might be some intellectual skills or even some uh, interpersonal skills or intrapersonal skills like grit, or growth mindset, curiosity, creativity. There are things that we need to teach students more than just teaching them to not act out and to not call out or to follow a certain procedure. We want to positively teach them to do things, to think in certain ways, to behave and interact in certain ways that are going to help them more successfully complete school, more successfully complete their work, and sustain their attention. And then finally, the first five steps, the confidence, the heart, the anticipate, the reinforce, the grow, all of those put together are probably half of what we need. Because if you do the first five steps, you've got your class in the place to where they are. A well-oiled machine, they know what to do, behaviors are minimized, but we haven't talked about learning yet. And the end result of anything we do in the classroom is learning and achievement, not necessarily behavior control. So we talk about engagement. How do we engage students? What motivates them to learn? How do we build tasks that can be used to leverage our memory systems. So all of this is a behavior management philosophy with these six steps that can be implemented by anyone on your own. It does not require you to buy a kit or a year-long subscription, and it does not compete with any other district mandate. So if you're trying to run small groups, if you're trying to do a PBL, problem-based learning, or personalized learning, all of this works with that because it's not a competing uh, curriculum system. Now, if you are watching this, that means you are probably interested in starting uh, from the very beginning. But as I was writing the content for this book, Take Charge, I realized that there is a different sequence that we need. It doesn't quite work for the acronym, um, but if we are going to make an immediate impact, 
we actually need to rearrange things. So we're going to go through each episode here in this web series. It's going to go through this particular sequence. We're going to go through heart, make sure we understand the heart of teaching, then procedures, then using our uh, differential social attention. Then we're going to get in confidence and engage and grow. So you're going to see the sequence is a little bit different if we're needing that immediate impact. And that's the sequence we're going to follow. Where does all this come from? Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to write the content for this uh, web series and for the book is because when I was looking for classroom management uh, resources in the past, when I was looking for solutions, they were very narrow. So I would find procedures, 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 or I would find a lot of mindfulness stuff, or I would find some stuff on empathy, or maybe um, some things about engagement, but there was no large integrated system. They were all very, very narrow. So I took everything that I can read. I read everything that could possibly affect uh, classroom management and teaching, and I wove it all together into this take charge model. And so we're going to talk about social emotional learning. We are going to talk about your traditional classroom management. Harry Wong, for those of you that have been around a while, culturally responsive teaching, because we have to talk about that neuroscience. So how does our brain naturally work? What is our amygdala? What is the limbic system? All of that's very important. Parenting books are extremely helpful simply because we serve as de facto parents for many of our students for seven hours a day. So there are a lot of good books on parenting that apply to teaching. Behavioral psychology, there's a lot of uh, therapists and psychologists that have done a lot of work with, with extremely maladaptive behaviors. We can learn a lot from them. And then finally, we're going to be pulling from um, some uh, more neuroscience about memory systems and executive skills and executive functioning. All of that comes together into this take charge model. Now, as we're going through the immediate impact sequence, we're going to go through three waves. So if you look on the screen here, we're going to go through the teacher column down first. So the next episode, episode two, is going to start with relationships. And then we're going to go through procedures and attention and so on and so forth. What you're going to notice is that in our first wave through the next six episodes, we're going to be looking at the six parts of the take charge model, but specifically at what is the teacher doing. So we're going to really focus on teacher actions and teacher behaviors. And then we're going to reset. We're going to go over here to respect. And we're going to start again through the take charge model. But this time we're going to shift our lens a little bit and we're going to look at student actions and student behaviors. And then finally, we are going to that third wave through, start again through heart and move our way down through grow. But we're going to be looking at the tasks, the responsibilities, the activities that we have in front of our kids. So this is the instructional core. What is the teacher doing? What is the student doing? What is the task that everyone is supposed to be working on? So the Take Charge model impacts those three systems and those three areas. And we're going to hit the Take Charge model in three different waves, teacher, student, task, and responsibility. One thing I want to make sure I close on here is that the heart of teaching is students, not content. Yes, I understand that you probably were hired to teach mathematics or chemistry or second grade. But we teach students, not content. This is a very student-centered uh, behavior management system, and not because we don't worry about content, but that's because it's the students that do the learning. It's the students that make the connections. Learning is done by the students, not to the students. So to ignore them, to ignore their emotional needs, to ignore, ignore their social needs is just it's ridiculous because everything is done around student achievement and we have to take how they learn, how they operate as human beings into account. So this is very much student centered because they are why we are here. So we are focused on students and if we can get our relationship with students right and if we can get that going, everything else is going to make sense. So in our next episode, we are going to be talking about relationships. That's the heart of teaching. But if you want to find out more, you can look at my website, aarondaffer.com slash take charge. You can learn more about this web series, and you can also learn about the book, and you can email me or follow me at Twitter at Aaron Daffern.